guest, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasant duty to extend to all of you, on behalf of the Australian Government and the Department of Supply, a very warm welcome to this important occasion. We are honoured that the Prime Minister is able to be with us today to officially open the 64 metre antenna, which is tangible evidence of the cooperation existing between the United States of America and Australia. We also have with us Dr. James C. Fletcher and Mrs. Fletcher. Dr. Fletcher is the presidentially appointed administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, as it has come to be universally known. Dr. Fletcher, we are especially honoured that you have chosen to personally represent NASA at this first dedication of a NASA facility in Australia uh, by the Australian government. This is the only dedication in Australia that an administrator of NASA has attended. The associate administrator of NASA, Mr. Gerald Trzinski, is present, and also Dr. William Pickering and Mrs. Pickering. Dr. Pickering is the director of the Jet Propulsion Authority, which on behalf of NASA is responsible for the systems management and technical direction of the deep space network, of which this new antenna is a vital part. I extend to each of these visitors to Australia our warmest welcome. The 64 metre antenna is to be known as Deep Space Station 43, with the identifying name of Belima, Aboriginal for very far away, which we believe to be symbolic of both its location in this country and its role in deep space tracking. The Department of Supply is responsible for the performance of this and other NASA stations here. But Australian industry plays a vital part in their staffing and operation. The contract for operational and maintenance services at Tiddenbilla is held by Amalgamated Wireless as Australasia Limited. And I am pleased that the company's managing director, Mr John Hook, is with us today. Construction of this antenna has entailed a great deal of planning, hard work and skill, involving many branches of the engineering and allied professions. The prime contractor was Collins Radio Company of Dallas, Texas, whose basic task was to fabricate the antenna in the United States, ship it to Australia and arrange its direction. I would mention a considerable use made by Collins of Australian workers on site here, and also the extensive use of local materials, such as the concrete pedestal, including the steel reinforcing, the steel fabricated revolving staircase, much of the piping on the antenna, and all of the painting. The Australian Department of Works, in consultation with engineers, from the Department of Supply and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory planned the modification of the existing instrumentation, the area and power generation station and other facilities to meet the requirements of the new antenna. The detailed design was completed by the Department of Works and the prime construction contract is awarded to the Bookman Building Group. The staff at Tiddenbilla have participated significantly in the commissioning of the antenna with the installation and testing of electronics. My thanks go to all the people and organisations involved in bringing this antenna to a state of operational readiness. I am proud to be associated with the opening of the antenna, a facility which will be instrumental in pushing back the frontiers of space and opening its mysteries to mankind. Sir, it gives me very great pleasure to welcome all present on this important occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present the Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable E.G. Whitlam. Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Administrator, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. 
This is one American facility on...